So check out. Great. How do you think that went? Um, sweet, sweet. I like I like talking about these things because um, somebody somebody told me it's, um, the good thing about sort of um, what is it preaching to the choir is that you sharpen your own message. It's the like, all right, that's why I do this. Right, I forgot. You know, it's not that I actually forget it, just but it's fun to refresh it. Um, mm. And it's fun, you know, when you rephrase things or you bring your angle, it's fun just, um, just the freshness of a different perspective, just different words for the same thing I find refreshing. Mm. It's, all right, and there were a few things that he's I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't have said it that way. And yet I totally get it and like, you know, not, not in a sense of disagreement of like, oh, cool, a new tool, a new phrase, a new, new visual to, to look at it. It's fun. It's very fun to me. Great. Very I'm fun. glad I can offer that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really great way of seeing, you know, there is no waste in continuing to rehearse your, your passion, your pitch, all of these things. Because still, I don't know how it is for you, but when I speak to somebody about my work and they're from the entirely other end of the spectrum where the system has been getting them down so long and yet they accept it and they feel powerless. They hear what I'm doing and this look like you're an alien and I just don't know if I can believe this. Are you trying to con me? You know, I, I'm not used to that feeling and I don't know if I ever will be that um, I falter and I don't feel like I can represent the vision to this outside of the choir so that you're saying we rehearse with each other those that do understand already i i value that hopefully in time we do find it a little more comfortable or a little more eloquent when we speak to the far end of the spectrum what always strikes me in what strikes me in what you say is sort of the Many, many of us, you know, on, on, in this journey have a s sense of not having belonged or not belonging um, and being the odd person, being the too idealistic, being the, you know, too naive, like really you think that's how the world could run. Seriously, kind of. And we have it internalized so much that it gets in the way, right? It's just so endlessly sad if you think about it, it's just so sad. Just the, the invisible pain of carrying that 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 world, that more beautiful world, sort of closer to the surface, right? Not as and and yeah, just living in the contrast of that. I struggle a lot with it, acceptance around that. Mm. Okay, we're not there yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's hard for me to accept that. So yeah, those moments that you just talked about, like yeah, and then and then not being a good enough advocate for it. That's. Um. That's, ah, yes, yes, I own, um, yes. Yeah, that is always improving, really, every day. And as you embody it, as, you know, you don't notice what is being noticed by others. You, you very rarely get recognition for having planted a seed in somebody's mind. You know, you're not going to see what comes of that. And yet, we all know, because we've all been affected by others, who don't know they affected us, that absolutely this happens. And um, hopefully that is enough to keep going with it. <laughs> if there wasn't everything else <laughs> that motivates us to keep going. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to share a quote with you that this just triggered in me. When I listened to a podcast on the Sutra show and the interviewee was Alnoa Ladur, uh, the last, I don't know, Lata, uh, he's the founder of therules.org. And they say, um, you know, we get told that there are idealistic points of view. This is, this is paraphrasing the context, you know, um, in terms of idealism and wanting to create something that's better than the current world, um, we, we're told that it's idealistic. But the most utopian thought is that we can keep doing what we're doing now and for that to be okay. I like <laughs> so yeah. dare to dream, dare to do something different from this because it's more realistic, ultimately. Hmm. 
That's true. And that's not only, you know, if shit hits the fans scenarios, it's also because people who don't believe that there could be better ways, they're also not seeing all the good ways that are already happening. That's the other thing. But, yeah. Okay, that's a whole different topic. Um, sort of the parallel, two parallel worlds that we live in. It's just wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing work that bridges this divide between the two worlds. Those already facing despair and those anticipating it. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. yeah wow i now i'm noticing that i'm exhausted actually <laughs> yeah good exhausted but exhausted i hope you have good self-care routines yeah it's very easy to commit and continue committing and take more and more on but please please look after yourself for the benefit of us all I will try. It's not my strong suit. Oh, no. <laughs> well, here I am requesting it. So. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. I do say. All right. So I am. I am. I will. We will not have time to go the other way. Yeah. Um, but we could think about scheduling something. Then. Yeah. Only if you want to. I'm not sure that I'm quite ready to even talk about the garden but yeah if we want to touch back in after a month or so okay, so that's an opportunity mm. um, regarding regarding this conversation that we've had I've recorded the different sections of it five sections um, are there any parts of what we've recorded today which you would like to uh, prevent others from watching uh, keep private no Mm -hmm. I think it was weird, but not everything can go public. Nice. You know, I'm always a little cautious about the trans thing, but that's like whatever. It's out there anyway. It's like it's. I haven't so much carried it into my work life that it's whatever. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, camera enough. Everybody can Google old old stuff of mine, and in a year, everybody. Yeah, anyway. Mm. It's just what it is. Yeah, well, it's wonderful that you're able to bring visibility into yet another field. Um, I wouldn't want to assume that you want to be any kind of spokesperson for all trans people everywhere or something like that. But I think it's also really important that we bring visibility out into the topic of gender and that it's, again, it's about that human thing, that we can't detach the human from the work that we do. So I really admire your courage and your, I thank you for your transparency today. You know, I actually think that it also contributed to me being in this field quite a bit because yeah. first of all, because of the sense of not belonging and looking, I was very actively looking for like, what the heck is going on? Is the world wrong on me? You know, and it turns out both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and the other thing is, um, what that meant for me was sort of a different voice than I expected always speaking to me. And, you know, first of all, I hate it. And second of all, you know, not like, I don't know, it's, it's not pleasant, but it also helps you see two sides, right? So mm -hmm. for example, in the whole like national news things, you know, about male privilege, it's mm -hmm. funny how much male privilege I've acquired while growing up female, you know, it's just funny to me. So I always have this, like, I can fairly seamlessly shift back and forth. And some, some, like, some things people say will trigger me one or the other way. You know, I sort of default to the male side, mm. but I can talk, you know. So I always felt very torn, for instance. I, I read in your little blurb that you, like, um, eco-feminism. I was just thinking, like, yeah, feminism, that was always sort of, sort of a tricky thing for me because, because feminism for me meant being counted in where I didn't want to be counted in. Ah. So I always had a strong reaction, like a strong leave me alone with it reaction to feminism, which of ah. course is more about me than about feminism. I mean, who, who in, in their sane mind can be against feminism? But um, mm. anyway, it's just, why am I saying all of that? Because it, the both and, the both and is sort of, it's mm. so deeply implanted in me that, yeah, you can't separate it. And obviously everybody has some, some of that. So yeah, forgetting yeah. it, missing out on something. Yeah, 
you have a really valuable point of view from being an, um, an under underrepresented demographic and so I, I'm so thankful that you can bring that unique perspective into sociocracy and that because like you say it's linked whatever it is that catalyzes us looking for something different I mean we all have it <laughs> many of us that feel we don't belong in this system for a good reason we don't actually belong in this system we need a new one or we need to repair it and um, yeah oh, that touches me power to you hmm. I had somebody who started not shaving anymore he was the, yeah. in business and for him that was the most radical thing to do Wow. Which makes perfect sense in that world, you know. Just thinking like it doesn't even have to be earth shattering what we <laughs> all allow ourselves to do or not to do, yeah. Or who, who we allow ourselves to be. Just like for him, that was so radical that people came up to him and said, I can't take you seriously anymore as my boss. Wow, oh my god, someone who dares to own their body. Oh god. <laughs> Exactly. And that shows you how radical it was. It was perceived as radical, you know, whether I find it radical or not, it was perceived as radical. It's just yeah. like, and to him, you know, that came a lot. That's one thing that really interests me of what self-management does to leaders, because all of a sudden you have to think about everything you do and you can, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be true to yourself. It's mm -hmm. such a tall order. Um, and it does a lot with people. It's interesting to ask about the personal transformation aspect of, of self-management. It's really an interesting, interesting <laughs> process. Yeah. Anyway. I'll yeah. go my daughter. Amazing. Cool. Thank you for today. We'll release this on uh, the Vanilla Way. Um, well, I'm hoping to get a transcript if people would rather read it as an interview and put that on the Vanilla Way blog. The video we are using Tammy Lee Myers' channel. She's from the Global Challenges Collaboration. Uh, and I'm considering to set up a podcast channel for Vanilla Way and have this an audio format so that it's made more accessible in different dimensions. So um, I can send you some links when they're up and you can distribute it amongst your network as you please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, nice to meet you. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>